Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them? Episode 50! Oh we made it! Cheers! Uh, cheers. We have to cheers for this one. We have to go into the abyss for old time's sake. Mm, cheers. Cheers. Honestly, I am in a bit of a giddy mood. I feel so happy. I don't know. I haven't been this... Such an accomplishment. Yeah, it is an accomplishment, and it also has renewed my internet love again. I feel like I fell into, like, oh. such a crazy slump with my main channel. I don't know. It's just... It's been really really nice like having something that I feel good about putting on the internet like I'm like oh yeah I have to go do my thing with Lily like it just feels like this part of my life that just feels right I don't know I was getting almost emotional reading comments on our last episode because people are very nice <laughs> like very fucking nice and you guys are just so supportive and sweet and I just it's, it was it was a lot I think because both of us have lacked consistency for <laughs> A while. Mm, yeah. It's nice to see people excited about it. So appreciative of the consistency now. Because they don't have to be because this is like what normal YouTubers do. <laughs> it's just it's just us that we for some reason yeah. can never get They're it. They're like, you made it to another week. And we're like, oh God, I know. Thanks. Well, you know what? Honestly, I have to say, and I was talking to my dad about this. He was saying like, you know, I always wanted for you something like this where it wasn't so draining for you to come up with content. And when he said that, I was like, oh my God, like, yes, that's what it really is. It's not that I don't like to film on my main channel. It's that when you have to week after week come up with something that is so funny much pressure on the or topics. like, yeah, I start falling into a slump. I'm like, okay, I have three things that I can do. And that's basically it. I don't know what else to do outside of that. And this is like a self-sufficient, it's like a sustainable farm or something. I don't know. It's like somebody's always doing some shit on the internet. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, we're never gonna run out of topics. That's um, <laughs> definitely a positive. And I think that was a looming fear when I was doing story times. Everyone yes. I would film, I'm like, oh, I don't have many left. What's you gonna are preaching to the choir. Every story time that would go up, that would be like a hit. And everyone's like, holy shit. They're like, we want more. And I'm like, my life just isn't that interesting. <laughs> like, like I was, that's all I have. <laughs> I was only a mess for like five years of my life. And now it's not so much. Oh my God. I was even thinking about it recently. And I was like, even some of the stories I think I had written down as like potential topics I could do. I'm like, now it's been another three years. I don't, I don't fucking remember anything. Honestly, too, I want to say, I know that this is about like internet drama and stuff like that. But we did get a comment the other day that kind of bothered me. And maybe it bothered me because there's truth to it. I'm not sure. It's the one that said we were a gossip channel. Yeah, because so someone calling us a gossip channel. Like that we were like mean girls who were just gossiping. And what bothered me about that is because it's not that we're not gossiping. I, I think that to a certain extent when you're talking about other people's drama or issues, yes, that is considered gossiping. And maybe sometimes we give a little bit too much of our opinion and we can come across as bitches, you know what I mean? Where we like speculate too much maybe, which could be interpreted as gossip. It is a gossip show. Because maybe. That's, it's funny because there's that comment that says that we're mean girls, which like, I mean, haven't you heard? I was the mean girl color guard captain. That's still my favorite comment to this day. <laughs> For the exact same reason, I feel like that's why other people like us. They're like, oh, I feel like I'm gossiping with my girlfriends on FaceTime. But at the same time, I would hope, and if, it, if I ever fall short of this, call me out on it because I don't want it to become a, like sometimes in real life, I have to check myself too. I'm like, Jesse, you're a hating ass bitch. You know what I mean? Like sometimes that is the case. And fair enough. You know what I mean? But I do always hope that we, for the most part, either try to cover something to be informative, to dig into why is this even happening? You know what I mean? Like, why is this person doing this? And, and what is the logic behind it? Instead of just being like, ha ha, fucking idiot. Like, you know what I mean? I don't want that energy to be our, our shtick. I feel like maybe we did that with the cake decorator, but her cakes were really ugly. I was just going to say that because I'm like, that's the only episode where we're like during. I was like, are we just... Are we just mean? Yeah. Is this just like us insulting this girl that's not good at baking? Yeah. I think the thing that bothered me with that issue was a customer who had paid her actual money was not happy and she treated them poorly. That's what was frustrating. Like, I feel like there's always an underlying thing. I know that the customer is always right. It's like an eye roll. To oh, crap, my monitor turned off. Wait one sec. You spilled? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, shit. And I don't have another one. The good part is I think I got all of that on camera. Lily spills her entire Truly part two. <sighs> a saga that never ends. <laughs> I'm so sad. And I usually have two, so I'd have a backup. But I... Oh, bitch, the whole thing spilled? Yeah! An entire tall boy. Jesse, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> a cowboy, a tall boy. No, I, I can't still can't Any other boys you, you want to tell me about? Wait, is it a tall boy or a cowboy? What? Uh, a cowboy or a tall boy? I said boy? tall boy. No, no. Right now you just said cowboy. No. No. Okay. Instant replay. <laughs> 
Okay, wait. So back to what we were saying before Lily spilled what her What was I saying? Something about that we don't we don't want to be bitches. I don't know. The cake. Oh, the cake. I think it was the cake thing. Oh, um, she basically took like the customer is always right, which like I know is an eye roll to some people, but like uh, she did the opposite of that. She was like, no, no, the customer is so fucking wrong and I'm going to tell them. And honestly, I'd be on board for that if her cakes didn't look so bad. So it all kind of circles into each other where it's not just me wanting to be mean. Honestly, I, I feel like if you compare, and I've said this before, if you compare a first episode ever and I've gone back and watched it, I'm like, God, I was so scared to say You defended anything. the Ace family. I, you know what? Those were trying times and we don't talk about them. <laughs> Guys, I was like as surprised as many of you probably were during that episode. Because going into it, I did not know that she was going to be take. I didn't know we were taking sides. I thought we was, were usually on the same side. I always think about that episode and how I made you cut out your Duff Noodles criticism because I was like, we can't like criticize Duff Noodles. I had my finger on the pulse. What the, has the show turned into? Because we, if you look at our journey, it's just insane. But I don't have a filter anymore, girlies. It's gone. Yes, yeah, she does. All in all, what I'm trying to say is thank you guys so much for your support. And if we ever get a little bit too bitchy, call us out, girlies. I'm okay Stop with it. Stop saying girlies. You've said it even before we started filming. <laughs> you know why I'm saying that? Oh my God, I hate Alex James. Alex and I play Fortnite every day and night. And um, he has me saying girlies. So he'll be like, are we going to the pond, girlies? And then and then it, that's it. It's stuck in my brain. I'm actually glad you brought him up because if you guys missed the last episode, it's a unhinged deep dive in to the Britney Spears conspiracies, which honestly continued after we stopped filming and I found some other stuff, but we're not gonna bore you with that this time. <laughs> um, if you stuck around through all that, you got to the end of the episode, which created some technical difficulties for us. From Jesse's request, we covered the Island Boys and the fact that they have an OnlyFans. Apparently she found that because out. Alex because Alex told Because Alex James told <laughs> yeah. me that. So Jesse received the photos we showed you via text from Alex James. She didn't actually go to the Twitter where they came from. I I don't recommend it. Don't do it. If you do, do not go, do not go. Trigger warning. What had happened was that Lily was the one putting in the Island Boys pictures over the part that I had edited of the Island Boys. And so I went ahead and I was like, girly, <laughs> Sorry, girl, I got you. And I photoshopped those like vomit emojis over the Island Boys little weenies. And then I sent it to Lily. We split the edit. So she edited the actual episode, like just cut up the us. And then mm -hmm. I was gonna add in all the assets. So I got a little too into it and I was being a little too detail oriented at times. And we were discussing when he had posted one of these pictures. So I went to grab the tweet to show the date. Oh my God. I'm watching at my dinner table eating some meatballs, babe. Lily had specifically said, watch the island boy part. She's like, watch the island boy part. It's so funny. And I added the pictures and it's funny. And I was like, slay, love it. So I skipped straight to the island boy part once the episode's already live, girl. And I'm looking and I'm watching, eating my meatballs. And I literally choked because on my screen was an unblurred photo of a fully visible boner through the island boy's underwear. And I text Lily, I, we have to show the text. I was in full panic. I was like, oh my God, Lily, they're wieners. I, I was freaking out. Then my heart sank. I was like, wait, what? Because I'm like, no, she put she put the thing. And then I was like, oh no, I pulled the tweet. I forgot <laughs> to blur it there. So there's two parts to this. First, a few hours earlier, when I pulled this tweet, when I was scarred for life because Jesse didn't tell me because she didn't know because she never looked herself. But lucky bitch. Um, if you go oh. to Twitter, <laughs> you might know Twitter doesn't censor things. That's like the only social media where you can like yeah. basically uh, openly post porn. Openly post porn, they do. Oh my God, I've seen so much more of the Island Boys that I than you ever, ever wanted to see ever in my life. I don't even know how to describe. <laughs> I think I audibly was like. Ah! I just love that everyone was so bamboozled by that segment. They were like, thanks, Jesse. That was great. <laughs> I responded to someone on Twitter when I was explaining the whole like putting on a private and stuff when we were fixing the situation. And I was like, you know, I was probably desensitized after I was shown their dicks just everywhere. It's like every post is just their dicks. And I'm like, how did you even get the boner picture? Like those are nothing compared to these. And it was just their boner through their underwear, but absolutely I think that would be like an issue. Number one, I don't want you guys seeing that. Okay, not if you don't want to. If you want to, it's on Twitter. But if you don't, don't want to, I don't want to like force that upon you. It really is quite the outline of pretty much every, like the whole essence of their wieners. And so I was completely shook. And so we had to take the episode down. We had to blur it, re-export, put it back up. And when we did, because we covered the conspiracy of Britney, everyone thought that it was taken down because of the conspiracy of Britney, which was also pretty slay. I was like, 
okay, that kind of worked. I like that storyline better. Oh, that was funny. Um, it was just a series of unfortunate events. Yeah. Anyway, what are we talking about today? I don't know what Lily has to bring. So we both have topics. Uh, I have one that's kind of short, but when I saw it on TikTok, I could not not talk about it because when I tell you I was ranting about it to my mom and I see him in my kitchen for like an hour, like girlie's got a lot to say. Oh Ooh, my God. Sorry. Girl's got... <laughs> I was scrolling through TikTok yesterday and I saw a friend of the show who seemingly we mentioned every fucking episode, Megan Ranks. Thought you were gonna say Christy Carlson Romano. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. Although I would love to have her on one day. It would just be a full circle moment. And you know what? I'm manifesting it. Megan Ranks, she duetted this video on TikTok. It was about these teachers who have this podcast. Everybody has a fucking podcast. I mean, I know I'm one to talk, but like, doesn't everybody have like, a fucking I'm podcast? I'm sure the people that we talk about feel the exact same way about us. Oh my God, facts. That's so true. Girly. There is a podcast called Teachers Off Duty Podcast. And it is, from what I understand, a kind of like rotation of teachers. And they also have guest teachers on. And they just talk about like being teachers, which I think the essence of the podcast, <laughs> I mean, obviously, right? Did I need to explain that? I was gonna say, <laughs> say teachers one more time. <laughs> but I feel like the idea of it is good in the sense that maybe the behind the scenes or the venting of teachers would be a interesting like thing to look at. and funny. Yeah, and there are a lot of teachers in the world who would probably want to see a podcast like that. So I think the essence of it is good. However, I think there is an issue that I have with just getting on a podcast and just like complaining about your students, which I think is inevitably going to happen when you have a teacher's based podcast. Like there's only so much you could talk about your profession before you kind of start shit talking your students publicly. You know well, what I mean? And I think there's probably I like I'm not going to come up with hypothetical examples right now, but I'm sure there's numerous instances where you could tell like anecdotes about students and have it be like a funny or like of course a teaching moment for the teacher podcast. Yes. Perhaps. Yeah. This sounds like just people that went on to vent about their job and not just that. their job also so it's like, oh, by the way, your job involves kids that you're talking about. You realize that, right? Yeah. Well, I think I, I did see a, other clips from their podcast because I wanted to see what their usual vibe, the vibe is. Was. Yeah. And it does seem like they have funny stories about being teachers and just like things their administration do that make their life harder and like whatever. I don't it know. It was just, you know, perhaps like an off day. No, I just think that these two that are specifically in this clip just suck. Oh, and they're not in every episode. No, these two are not in every episode. And what's really funny about Megan's duet to this video that I'm about to show you guys is that she said like justice for Megan Trainer because if you guys don't remember <laughs> a couple weeks ago uh we covered a clip of Megan Trainer saying fuck teachers yeah no but well, we're I mean, homeschooling our kids same I think everyone fuck should, that. like we yeah. all, everyone on TikTok is they're like yeah. this is what it's like to have a kid in school in America I have a bulletproof backpack I was like fuck all that like uh -uh. that but also Bullying. kids can be mean teachers I, that, that was my teachers. trauma teachers, fuck and, teachers and, dude. you know but and then she clarified and was like well just fuck some teachers which honestly after seeing this like fuck I forgot that I, I did see Megan's post. I was reading the comments and it's like, no, but seriously, like this is what she meant. And it was that Trisha Paytas was on the podcast and she had thrown out that she was bullied by teachers. And then Megan Trainer kind of like in the background was like, yeah, fuck teachers. She honestly just chose the worst possible way to say like some teachers are kind of kids bullies, you know, like not all of them, not the majority of them, but there are some bad apples. It was a very specific response to a very general conversation that it, then she just kind of brushed over. But then you see this and it's like, this is probably what she was talking about. And the reason I wanted to cover this is because of the nature of this topic. So before I um, even show you the clip, I know I'm gonna show it soon, I swear. I wanna quickly define to you guys what an IEP is because they're mentioning it in here. And if you don't know what it is, it's gonna be a little bit confusing. So an IEP is an individualized education program or plan. So it's an actual like legal document that you establish with the county of your child's school. It's a plan for the education of a specific child who needs extra needs. That's important to know because that's what they're talking about in this clip. Honey, prepare for mama to get real mad real fast. Okay, girly. I, have, I hate you. I had a couple of kids that are on IEPs, but they're barely qualified. The best part is when you get to talk crap about the kid and the kid's there, <laughs> you know, because you can be like, this kid is D-U-M-B and I would be worried about him knowing what I'm saying, but he can't spell. Okay, two two things um first what is barely being qualified for an iep mean okay so that's not a fucking thing 
That's first of all. So what she's trying to say is basically they weren't uh, special needs enough for me. Under my oh, like sphere oh. of like what I consider them needing it, which by the way, it's a legal document again, that an entire team. So like- it's like a committee of people. Essentially it's a committee. It has to go through a few people. And every time you have an IEP meeting, which is at least once a year, if not more, you can call IEP meetings. Like when I do one for my son, my son has an IEP. I have not only his teacher, I have his speech therapist. I have the general ed teacher who is not even his teachers just a general ed of kindergarten is always present there multiple people have to sign the documents everybody gets a copy of it it's a very like legit thing for this woman to be like they barely qualify that's annoying to me just because someone in her scope of things doesn't seem like they need it is so irresponsible so basically what she's saying is like they aren't special needs they're just stupid and like maybe annoying to her or something yeah their behavior like let's say if someone's just hyperactive right that would be a kid that yeah. appears typical other than maybe in her eyes is just quote unquote annoying or just like doesn't want to do the work or can't focus. Well, that's someone who needs their accommodations met and you have to accommodate them. This is one of those things that like, not even is, I mean, hers is bad too, but like his follow up to that about literally like calling a kid dumb. There's not a world that has ever existed that that would have been like really funny joke, I feel like. I want to read you their apology in a second because they uh -huh. did apologize. I, I have not seen that. Yeah, <laughs> they did put out an apology because you're getting absolutely reamed. Any parent that takes your kid to school period is trusting someone with their child's life life like it, you're just putting all this trust into someone and hoping that they have an even an ounce of the love you have for your kid and you hear all these horror stories of people putting recorders in their special needs child's backpack because yeah our kids can't communicate oh, yeah. like that right you get home you hear that recorder and they're calling their children the r word their teachers are calling their children the r word to their faces and hounding them every fucking day and that is everybody's worst nightmare and i just want to say that if these teachers were my child's teachers, my child would be out of their class yesterday. I was gonna ask, have, do they all still have jobs? I honestly, I'm not usually one to call for like the, you know, firing of someone, but I genuinely hope at the very least they are never allowed to work with a child who has an IEP again. I feel like honestly, for any job, even if it didn't involve like making fun of kids, the employer probably wouldn't be happy to hear that they were, like if you went on and were making fun of like clients or something, you would get yeah. you know, oh, fired Yeah, oh, absolutely. Probably. And I wanna kind of touch on the like nuance of this because I used to be, and I feel like I said, it on here before I used to be a substitute oh, yes. for children with special needs so I understand the behind the scenes of teachers finding humor in a virtually like humorless situation where you're highly stressed maybe overworked underpaid obviously we know all of the above there is a difference between finding humor in something I'll never forget there was <laughs> there was a student in our class who we like had a school that was behind like a strip mall and in, like a apartment building like complex and she found a box that wasn't a dildo but it was the box to the dildo and she brought the box to us and obviously we didn't like laugh in her face or anything we we're just like okay thank you and whatever we were all like crying laughing because of that it was like but that's so not funny. making fun of like their intelligence that's making fun of a kid yes being naive. and there was so many moments of that where these kids like kids with like specifically autism and down syndrome are so unintentionally funny because they're so blatantly honest because they don't have that like social filter and it literally totally. is really fucking funny sometimes you're not laughing at them you're literally laughing at like dude no one else could say this shit and you're saying it right now like it's funny but I think that there's a time and a place to talk about that what comes to mind is there was a speech therapist who worked with kids when I was literally in uh, like I was working as a volunteer for their summer camp and I must have been like 16 years old at the time and I witnessed her on multiple occasions call this one little girl a little monster and a little asshole and she would have tantrums and kind of act out and stuff and I just remember this person just blatantly like this adult she was like in her 30s calling her a little asshole and I just I don't understand why people like that get into this profession I genuinely don't here's the thing though about IEPs in specific for these kids who need them they have to be honored you don't get a choice in how or when you're gonna honor these IEPs or if you should honor them. Well, that's why they exist. Exactly, and it's something that like, for instance, and this has happened before where IEPs have goals, right? They'll have goals and specific accommodations that are literally written in there. Everything from like a tablet to a chair that they need because they need to be able to like swivel and move. There's like very specific accommodations that they can make. If those are not being honored or those goals are not to your liking, you can call an IEP meeting at any point and you can 
can demand certain things for your child. Like these are very, very legitimate documents. For these fucking teachers to talk like they're talking as if it's like, number one, your choice to decide if they need it or not. That's not your fucking decision to make. There's a lot of different people that go into this, but also for that one fucker, that's his name now, fucker. For that one fucker to say like, oh, you don't even know how to spell. It is so like, you don't understand Lily. Like it literally makes my like, heart In pound. general. I, how are you gonna be a teacher and say that? It would be like, I mean, we have a weird job, so it doesn't really count, but it would be like if you had a job where it was like, I don't fucking even have an example, but it was that you're bad mouthing your client. That's essentially yeah, what Yeah, like it is. the cake lady. But I wanna oh. show you guys the apology because they couldn't even muster up the fucking cojones to get on camera and face an audience and say, hey, this is how we feel. They just uh, wrote a bunch of different frames on TikTok. So let's give them a read on this ugly, hideous lilac background. Oh, wow. Not even a notes app apology. It's a TikTok. It is basically a notes app apology because it's just a bunch of words on a screen. Is this screen recorded or did you download it? This is it downloaded. Video. Like didn't do like a carousel. They did. They a did video. a video and it has like numbers on the bottom. Yeah, it's not the carousel that you can just sift through. That feels like the logical choice for this. I know it was very annoying. I literally had to like scroll through it. It was weird. But anyway, so they said, "Dear valued listeners, viewers, and followers, we recently posted a clip from an episode about parent-teacher conferences on the teachers off-duty podcast social platforms that included a conversation in which we regret that our words and thoughts were not carefully chosen." That's even a weird way to like no, just say you shouldn't have said it. It gets weirder. We know this conversation has caused pain and we apologize and take responsibility for everyone that it hurt, whether it be a student, parent, or fellow teacher. As teachers, we always wanna advocate for our kids and educators and always try to keep them out of harm's way. Unfortunately, during this recording session, you were the we harm? fell short of that. You think? You were the harm. You didn't just like put them in harm's way. You were causing the harm. <laughs> Literally. Additionally, looking back, a joke was made that upon listening to your concerns and reflecting, we see was wrong and in poor taste. Oh, you couldn't was see it a that joke? up front. No, they just couldn't. They needed a lot of like telling that that was wrong for them to realize it. They're like, upon being absolutely reamed on social media, we get it. But was it a joke or was it him recounting something that's happened? <laughs> Literally. Oh my God, yes. Often we use comedy and humor on our podcast that we we hope listeners understand is never intended to be malicious and though intentions weren't meant to be so, the impact it left was. Not them writing a whole essay. While there may be hundreds of other published episodes in which we show and express our support and how we advocate for our profession and our students, this one failed to do so. Oh, I'm sure that if you listen to all of them, there's no other examples <laughs> of you guys falling short. Thank you. This is my favorite. My favorite when people do this when they're canceled. Thank you for everyone who called us into a conversation and expressed how our words were harmful and have now given us the opportunity to reflect on how we can learn to do and be better educators and advocates. As always, we appreciate your support and will continue to make a more conscious effort to use our platform to spread happiness and empower others. Let me say something right now. There are certain situations, right, where I can, in the words of Ken Wax, I can see you got lost in the sauce. I frankly got a little bit lost in the sauce. Like I could see you get a little bit too like, and I, we've done it here on this podcast. Like you just want to kind of like rift off each other and like make it interesting. I mean, I defended Megan Trainer kind of. You did? Not really, but my whole thing was, I don't feel like she really meant it or that she was on the, like, yes. the front lines of like, let's get rid of education and all teachers. But it was a careless moment. It wasn't based in, I don't know, just it felt different. This feels like that was just showing his true colors. Well, 100% because like I said, I've seen so many teachers talking about their students and laughing about things that their students do. And this is not that. This was like intentionally, no. you're being a fucking bully. You're saying that a student is dumb. First of all, you're saying that a student with special needs and who needs accommodations is dumb and will not be cognizant enough to understand that you're shit talking them. So that's great because that means you could do it to their face. You're a fucking bully. I think genuinely, I don't know about the girl specifically because I don't think she said anything that deserves being fired necessarily. I think that she's still someone I wouldn't trust my child with. But him him, he absolutely deserves to be removed from his position. I don't think he deserves to teach, like genuinely. Whether it was a joke or not, I'm just like, first of all, if they really can't spell, aren't you a teacher? Isn't it your job to teach them? Yes. And it's also like, I'm sick and fucking tired of people saying shit that they just truly mean, saying the quiet part out loud and then being like, but I was just, I, oh, I was just joking. Like, no. That's the thing. It's like, I don't think that Megan Trainer was saying the quiet part out loud. I think she had just a momentary lapse in judgment. He feels like he means that. He's just like, oh shit, people got mad. This is the kind of situation that you know behind the scenes. He's talking to people being yes. like, oh yeah, this sucks, right? Like, I can't believe this is happening to me. You just know he is fucking pissed. He's like, oh my God, everyone's offended nowadays. <laughs> it's 
it's like, sir, do you really not fucking get it? I mean, I just, I we aren't going to go into this, but I did just watch someone else's coverage on Shane Dawson going on Steve-O's podcast. Oh, I saw that. There was a clip that I saw that he said the thing that I get so mad when anyone says this. No, but I'm glad it happened. I'm glad. That's what they canceled. said. No one is glad that they were canceled. You might be like, no, I'm not even going to say, say you were glad that you could do like the self like No, no one is no. happy about that. If you could have avoided it, you would have. <laughs> Let's just be honest. You could be thankful for the growth and that's totally fine. That's what I was going to say. But even then, I'm like, are they? <laughs> but are they really? I think they would have um, sacrificed the growth if they could have skipped the whole cancellation. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think that these people, I don't know because I tried to look for updates and I don't know the situation and how it kind of has unfolded and I'm curious to see if we'll ever know. But parents, like let's say parents of his students, if they saw this, this is absolutely something that they can have not only themselves and if you're someone who has a, a child with an IEP, just know that you can have student advocates that will actually approach IEP committees with you and will help you advocate for your child. Like you don't have to put up with shit like this. If you witness people treating your child like this, you have every right to call in a meeting and say, I don't want my child in his classroom. When I tell you I'm furious, I'm furious, I'm sweating, bitch. It might be the White Claws. I don't know, but I'm so pissed. Well, and thinking more about it, like this probably wasn't a specific, I know I said earlier, like, but did it really happen? Yeah. No, this probably was not a specific scenario he was referring to. Maybe more of just like a blanket kind of describing of a certain kind of scenario. I feel like it sounded specific where he's just like, I love when you can shit talk a student in their face and they don't really know what the fuck you're saying. That sounds pretty specific to me. But his example being not being able to spell the word dumb, he didn't say in a parent-teacher conference, your kid is dumb. Right, yeah. Regardless of whether it's a joke or not though, I just am like, you're telling it at the expense of the kid. And also it's not fucking funny. Aren't jokes supposed to, I'm sick and tired of people saying things are jokes and I'm like, crickets, girl. Also, I guess another reason why this is probably not something that maybe actually happened, which I was going to say should be concerning as well, because it's not stuff that the teachers are saying to the parents. It's stuff that's happening when the parents aren't there usually, and then no one is able to intervene. The way he describes it is if the parent would be in on making the fun of the kid too. Oh, interesting perspective, because now that you said that, yeah, I kind of feel like, oh my God, Lily. So like, it's probably not an actual instance of something he did because he wouldn't do that because a parent wouldn't be okay with that. Oh my God. What you just said, kind of help me put it on to perspective. So like he's kind of portraying what it's like to be in an IEP meeting or to be in a Uh parent-teacher conference and to be basically telling their parent that their child sucks or is not smart or is not whatever and the kid can't even really get it. And you know, oh my God, that just fucking made me so upset because when you're at an IEP meeting, you'll have a goal, right? And then you get told what percentage of the goal your child has met in a certain amount of time. And that can be really fucking difficult, especially when it's something that might be developmentally appropriate for kids his age that he's not even close to, right? Like that's really hard as a parent to hear. And the fact that he's even fucking saying that about that meeting and considering it like what I'm telling you now is not just what your child has or hasn't met in regards to their goals. I'm telling you like your kid's dumb. Like your kid doesn't get it. Like your kid can't do it. Like he didn't actually do that, which makes it even kind of grosser because I'm like, because that's just his, he thinks that's funny. That's his mindset when he's in those meetings. Like he may to a parent be like, oh, so this is the goals they haven't met. They're unfortunately not there. He's not doing good in this, that or the other. But in his head, he's just like, you're a fucking idiot. And I just genuinely have to ask myself, why get into this profession? Why, why do you, why do you do it? That actually makes me, I'm like, great point because I get venting about work. Like I'll vent about like Premiere Pro. Gives me fucking issues every single time I edit. There's always something going on. But to complain about something that, one, is the literal purpose of your job is to, like, teach kids. And you're going to complain about them, like, being not taught. I understand that there's a lot of, again, nuance to this topic. He is likely not a special needs teacher. I've seen a lot of teachers talk about how they get maybe too many IEP students in their class that they don't feel qualified to kind of handle that kind of situation. There's a lot of nuance to it and I understand that. And I also understand laughing about certain things that happen with your students because they could be unintentionally funny and that could be funny that you share with your teacher friends or whatever. This is not any of that. And that's what it comes down to is like, you're just a dick. Of all the things to be validly complaining about this isn't one of them no this is it's just not. you being an asshole this isn't you being like oh teacher problems it's like no what the fuck you know what this is giving <laughs> this is very much so giving like have you seen those clips where people like i don't even know where they would hide a recorder in their fucking asshole i'm not sure but when they get surgery like when people get oh, surgery and, and are recording it and the doctors are just like man this 
this bitch's tits are all fucked up or whatever the fuck There's been doctors that got caught like taking selfies and stuff. Here's what I really think it comes down to. I think that in every profession, in every corner of the world, there's going to be assholes. Yeah. And I think that's really what it comes down to. I think these people are just assholes. And that there's a range in how much being an asshole affects other people. So it's like, if we have a bad day at work, what's well, the worst that's going to happen? We maybe are a little too mean to the cake lady. If a doctor or a <laughs> teacher has a bad day at work, <laughs> then they are going to, like obviously a doctor at the high end of the spectrum where it's like they have someone's life in their hands. And then a teacher where it's like they also have someone's life in their hands in a different way and not as They have someone's death, spirit but, in their hands. Yeah. yeah. Someone's like future almost. Exactly. Just like you have like... the ability to really mold them and that's the kind of approach you have. Yeah. And it's also just really unfortunate. I, I, I just have to say, and I think that a lot of people have this perspective of if someone can't meet certain um, milestones that you have in your head that they should have met at that point, you think that they are dumb. I see a lot of people pity children with special needs. A lot of people tiptoe around children with special needs as if they don't un feel energies and they don't understand people's moods or judgment and they do. And I just think it's really fucking unfortunate that people like this exist. I think that people need to understand that maybe someone doesn't know how to speak. They know what the fuck you're saying most of the time. You're giving off bitch and they understand well, that. And I think that that's what makes this whole thing so ridiculous and ironic and is the reason people are mad is because of all people, to be saying that and generalizing that like a kid's just stupid because they don't know something. A teacher, a teacher. is not the person that's I'm supposed to be doing teacher. that. That should be a person that's problem solving being like, well, they aren't really grasping that concept. Let's try a different method. And instead he's just like, nope, fucking stupid. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's it for this topic. It was very infuriating. I knew that I had to talk about it because I had so much to say and I want it on the internet and I want more eyes on these two people because they got their little sure mics out. Like I said, the sure mic is a disease. For a second, I thought you were referring to us. I was like, not, not us, the teachers, got it. Oh no, no, the eyes on those two people, bitch, not <laughs> us, no. But like, I want more people to see this and I genuinely hope some repercussions come from this. Um, And that's basically it. And it's just another learning lesson for people to not say everything that pops into their head and also not say it on a podcast. Maybe sometimes, shut up. You know what I mean? Like just maybe sometimes. Anyway, Lily has a topic that I have no idea what it is and I'm excited to learn more. Girly, what is it? Well, before we dive into my topic, should we do a word from our sponsor? Absolutely. Thank you so much to ZocDoc for once again sponsoring this podcast. You guys, well, most of you already know because ZocDoc has been a lovely sponsor for a few months now. But if you don't know for some reason, ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. And it's super convenient because you go to the website and they have like the schedule all laid out there. So it's not like, oh, hey, we can see you in a month. You can see whether they have an available appointment like tomorrow. Yeah, and the take your insurance thing I feel like is a game changer because it's so annoying to have to call a bunch of doctor's offices and be like, do you take this insurance? Do you take this insurance? Like, just please treat me, please. It makes it so complicated, but you can just like put in your insurance and then it will only give you options that fall under your insurance. So it's like, beautiful, no brainer. Um, and there's nothing worse than a doctor in a rush. You know, you go, I remember in my pregnancy, I was like, uh, I, I couldn't even see them. They came in so fast and left. I was like, hello, did you even, hello? But but you can find quality doctors that, again, are patient reviewed. So you're seeing other patients who have seen these doctors, they're real people who are telling you their experience. And it's amazing. Honestly, I feel like ZocDoc just cuts through all of the annoying parts that are so tedious about booking a doctor's appointment. You're already sick, or maybe it's just a wellness visit, whatever it is, we usually all avoid it when it comes to the doctors. So ZocDoc just makes it easier. And speaking of avoiding things, did we mention you can book the appointments online so you don't have to make a phone call? Because I will do anything to avoid phone calls. So if you guys want to try ZocDoc for yourself, you can go to ZocDoc.com slash DWKT and download the ZocDoc app for free. And then you could find and book a top rated doctor today, most who are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash DWKT. ZocDoc.com slash DWKT. And once again, thank you so much to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode. Okay, so get ready. I'm ready. Because I feel like these videos are gonna make you just as mad. Stop, I'm already sweating. <laughs> For different reasons. It's like not a funny scenario, but I'm very excited to see your reaction because I think they're I'm gonna scary. be great. Full disclosure, I don't have like a ton of information on this. We're not gonna do a full deep dive like I did with the Britney conspiracy. <laughs> it's probably for the best, Lily. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think everyone's probably thankful for that. Basically, it's about, uh, it's another TikTok. <sighs> I would say obscure, Goody. but I think it's getting a lot of coverage now. I, you're gonna get so mad at these. Oh my God. Okay, we're gonna talk about a TikToker that does 
was pranks. Okay. I saw something about this. I've seen whisperings about this, but I cannot bear to watch prank things. So this is going to be great. There's one of them that isn't even necessarily the worst. And I was losing my mind. Oh, Lordy. Because I feel like also with pranks, you automatically put yourselves in there in the person. Of course. Is experiencing the prank. And oh my God, you're going to die at all these. But so (laughs) this TikToker, his name is Mizzy. And he's a little dick. (laughs) <laughs> oh, another dick. Love this episode. This is great. We're just raging the whole time. So the reason I came across this was because I've actually been editing for Angelica Oles. If you guys don't know, she covers the same kind of content as we do. And she is British. So she had some more insight into this situation because Mizzy is also British. And apparently, according to her, the way he got his start was not with pranks, believe it or not. <laughs> that it was um, basically there are people that go to this certain mall and they like hang out front and film videos that are like man on the street interview style things. Oh, hate that. She said like people from her high school, like it was people striving to be in those videos and they would get a lot of views, but it's all basically like, who's the sluttiest girl you know, are the questions. It's very clickbaity, not good All the content. alpha male people do that too. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. How many guys have you fucked? It gives very much, I'm um, like Sneeko vibes. She says that apparently that's how this guy got his start. Not surprising, <laughs> but he does these obnoxious pranks all the time And some of them give like Jake Paul vibes where I used to get so annoyed watching his videos. I mean, I didn't watch his videos, but like I would come across clips sometimes. And like specifically he would be in like a Target and he'd try and like walk in the back where it'd be like the door says team members only. And he'd be like, team 10? And then he'd walk back. And I'm like, oh my God, these people aren't being paid enough to deal with your shit. Leave them alone. So he does stuff like that where he'll like walk into the back of stores. He rides his bike through stores. He's just like obnoxious and makes everyone else's life hell. How does that a uh, human being come to be that way, do you think? I don't know. No, I mean like genuinely because not only like would I never, but I can't even, and I know I have to watch some of this because I'm pretty sure you're going to show me. Um, But like the visceral reaction that I have when people do things like this, how do you lack that kind of understanding that you're literally the fucking worst and you're making people's day harder? It's not even that. It's being able to one, like compartmentalize the things you're doing as not being real. I feel like they, they treat it as like it's just for content so it doesn't count and like prioritizing content over morals i feel like you have to have some sort of part of your brain that's not functioning properly to do this because i did a video with my husband years ago where we were handcuffed to each other and you're freaking out the entire time dude i was freaking out the entire time. We went to a nail salon and it was like my usual nail salon. I was like, I'm gonna get my nails done while I'm handcuffed to my husband. So I called ahead. They were like, absolutely. I go in, they were super confused. They were like, what are you doing here? (laughs) Why are you handcuffed to your husband? So I literally just looked at him and I was like, take him off. Like I literally like threw this out. I was like, take him off, take him off, take him off. And that's not even like an, I guess maybe an inconvenience to a manicurist, but like that's not an inconvenience to other people. But I literally took him off. And I got my nails done, like, by myself. And then he just picked me up after. And I was like, okay, well. (laughs) I've had to do so much weird stuff for Clever. And I was mortified every time. And anytime it involved other people, I was always, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because I'm just, like, so conscious of interfering with other people's lives. Yes. Which is probably also, like, not necessarily the healthiest. I'm, like, always trying to take up as little space as possible. Don't you feel like when you're in that moment where you're inconveniencing someone, it is, like, debilitating? Like, it it genuinely feels hard. I mean, I don't know how many fucking meals I've eaten that were dog shit. And like, I will literally be in the middle of being like, this is the fucking nastiest shit I've ever eaten to my my husband or like my brother. And then they're coming, they're like, how is it? I'm like, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Can I get into a go-box? I don't know how people do this. Like it has to be a different connection in the brain than you and I have. Well, and the the same thing I just brought up that it's like a cognitive dissonance because it's not like they don't know the things they're doing are offensive and bad because that's literally why they're doing them because they know they're rage baiting people in real life and via the video. But let's just start watching these videos because, oh my God, I guess his stuff kind of exists on a spectrum. Some of it's like him riding a bike through a store, which like yeah, it's annoying. No, but the fuck you. Day, That's horrible. Anyone. I mean, it could hurt someone. Like some are just him being annoying, but then they have escalated and they kept escalating. And then he ended up getting arrested <gasps> for one of them. So let oh, me shit. take you through. I'm like, I wish I had labeled these because that would have been the smart thing to do. But I'm so jealous. 
so you just open one. Like mine is like Sorry. one sip left <laughs> and it's warm. Lordy. I boss. Come and see What's wrong? You're I'm so I'm just gonna get dick. so annoyed. <gasps> Is he in the fucking back? I told it's like Jake Paul times ten. Not too. What? Well, I can't ride it in here. Oh shit. So that's also, that's his recovery method every time. It's just like playing dumb. No, he is dumb. He's not playing. I'm like watching him ride the bike in such a tight space and all of a sudden there's like fryers everywhere. I'm like, hello? Where yeah, yeah, so, oh my God. I like, this is the next one I should do. Where are his parents? How old is he? I have so Actually, many questions. that was gonna be one of the questions that I posed afterwards is, I just have to ask because if my mom saw me doing any, close to any of this like the most minimal thing if i did she would have a comment on and just rip me apart and it would just crush my soul a comment my parents would put me in like a psychiatric unit i'm not even joking they'd be like something is wrong with social media in general we've discussed how certain behavior not necessarily pranks or being like an asshole like this but just like doing weird things even how we're so confused a lot of the time when people are doing it because we're like, oh my God, if I was doing that, people I barely even know would be showing up at my apartment and taking my phone away. Like, why is no one stopping them? But that kind of makes sense too, because then it makes you realize maybe this person either number one, didn't have anybody worth a damn in their life who would tell them Ooh. no, Ooh. or they do and something's just wrong with them. Uno reverse, deep thoughts. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's true though, That good point. You'll forget that when I show you this next video that this one, I, I'll just show you the worst one right now. I have oh. never been so like, oh my God, what are you doing? Like this is so not okay for so many I'm reasons and you're, you're gonna die. Um, okay, are you ready? Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, hello. Hi. You got a nice dog. Sorry? You got a nice dog. She's lovely, she's, she's a family dog. Don't run away with her. Bing gang, whole lot of gangs. We are side. We are side. We are side. We all got this fucking dog. We are side every single time. What do you think? Okay. Um, okay, I, just I, one second. I, Let me just I'm gather sorry, myself I'm sorry, I'm sorry. really quick. Uh, should, I have, should we put a trigger warning before the video? Because it's a trigger warning, cute dog stolen from elderly woman. Yeah, I it's think like so. There's so many levels to it because honestly, I think of like, oh my God, if someone tried to take my dog, but it's the fact that it's this like old lady that's just this unassuming poor woman sitting on this bench. The dog's just minding his own business. And then I just, I lost it, but I have to say, just to have a lighter moment for just a second, I was dying at the dog because it is just- <laughs> The dog's just like, where am I going? <laughs> Literally, he's like, where are we going? If someone tried to steal Max, it would not go down like this. <laughs> Look at them. Oh my God, you're right. Look at that screenshot you just landed on. This dog is just chilling. Like it is just like, hmm, what? what's happening? Where are we going? Was that the elderly woman coming after him in the back? Oh, probably. So that was back to what I was saying is, then I think about the fact that this is poor old woman and like, she can't chase him. She can't can't get it back. Like, oh my God, what is she? Th she thinks her dog is just gone forever now. Look like, at this. And the dog is cracking me up in the face. Dog. Here's my question. Does he think that he's gonna continue to fuck around and not find out? Because he's gonna do this to the wrong motherfucker and he's gonna find out. I mean, I think he picked his victim accordingly in that situation, but- Oh my God, you're continue, right. You'll see that, especially in one of the points that Angelica brings up in her video, which I actually didn't know, that you can't carry weapons of any kind in the UK. I guess, pause, put a pin in that one and we'll get back to it, but- um, <laughs> Okay. Because that has more to do with the last one. Let me show you a couple more. This one, I feel like it's gonna irk you so badly. Is someone in a wheelchair? No, no, no. Okay, I'm like, cause he like literally just blame disabled people. <laughs> no. Cause I wouldn't be surprised. This is one instance, but he does it, I guess he's done it more than once. Basically, this is one of the pranks that he does. He goes up to sometimes men, but usually women, approaches them and 
asks them if they want to die. Oh my God, are you fucking kidding me? And then me? he proceeds to touch them. Touch them how? Like caress their hair. Imagine if you were sitting at a bus stop and some random ass dude came up to you. It's like weird horror movie shit that you're like, wait, what? Like, huh? And then it would then play out into being like a murder plot. It doesn't obviously wow. because Mizzy is an asshole, not a murderer, but it's so uncomfortable. But there, I like your hair still. You got some nice hair. It's nice and luscious. I'm perfectly fine. We're gonna die. Huh? Why are you just smiling at me? Oh. I asked him a question, a serious question. Do you know that? No. Why? Because you can why. Because you can still touch him. Why? Because. You're gonna die? You sure? Yeah. I'll see you from the day. You're just looking like you wanted to die. Hmm? <laughs> when did we look at you? Well, you was looking at me this whole time. Do you know that? No, nah, bro. Ah, uh, bro. Bro. Do you die, bro? Bro, don't even answer that right now. Is it serious, bro? You're trying to answer the phone? Who's calling you? They can wait. They can wait, bro. Do you die, bro? Because I can take it out right now, bro. What's wrong? Huh? What's wrong? I can take it out right Lily, now. Lily, can you, you die? Oh, hold on. Me. Can you not hear it? I hear him say... No, I do... <laughs> It's the same reason I couldn't watch Love Island. Unfortunately, I know. He's not really know, saying I'm sorry. much else. I can't really understand the accent too much. It's real thick. He just is pretty much just repeatedly asking her, do you want to die? Like, you were looking at me. I got that. Do you want to die? Like, he's just saying the same thing pretty much. He, what does he say? You're looking at Something me? Something like, did you look at me? Or like, you looked at me, blah, blah. And she's like, we didn't look. At, when did we look at you? And then he, he's, he's just instigating. I mean, obviously, like, his energy is extremely intimidating and also gives off, like, if it was me and I was in that position i'll be like this person's mentally unstable exactly and that's the thing me. is he comes across like when he's like getting mad he's like bro bro and he's like getting frustrated and she like hasn't even said anything like ro not rocking back and forth but kind of like very shifty yeah, and like yeah. moving a lot that's a lot also like i mean yeah it's not legal to carry weapons but that i'm sure does not mean p people don't still do it and he has a backpack on his hands are in his pockets like he definitely does not have a yeah. an inviting uh body language going on i don't know if it's out of place to mention it but i feel like it's mentionable if he was in america doing this this would be a very different scenario because this is the uk so it is a very different scenario but i'm saying if he was in america this would be insane and honestly that's the reason i brought up the weapons thing because we're about to watch one where he walks into a person's home. Oh, you die. In, in Where I live, in Georgia, if you even did it by accident legitimately, they can legally shoot you. Wow, holy shit. Those are all the other ones. Um, This is what everything like escalated to and ended up getting him arrested. Oh wait, should we, yeah, yeah, might as well include it because it's a problem in apparently not just the US, but the UK as well. He also has some anti-Semitic pranks. Oh, fun, I guess. love that. Pranks. I don't know if this was technically a prank or if it was just him being an asshole but it's on a uh, live where he approaches an orthodox jewish person wow. to harass them it's quite bad the food the food was bad i can't lie i was laughing in it yeah but i actually i've actually acknowledged and i thought about it and it's actually bad so can i hug you come just what no 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 just like a respectful hug can i hug you you don't a want it hug. what god we need subtitles girly <laughs> I can't, honestly, I was like, I couldn't really understand what he was saying on that one either, but it wasn't positive things. He's from wherever the other people on Love Island are from, because I really just can't make it out. And also that was a, just like a small snippet from Alive, but I guess it's known that he has had some anti-Semitic I have not him. seen Ethan react to this. I imagine this is going to be on H Street. Like, I can't imagine he would not know about this. This is fucking crazy. Well, so then you're going to see this last one and it's already crazy, but then when you think of it in the context of if this was in America, you would absolutely be shot in two seconds if you did any of these honestly wow. but specifically this last one because he just waltzes into someone's house oh my god oh my god oh my god i know i know james james you man, come. Hello, um, James. We need to speak to James. James. Huh. Hi. Um, Not the baby. Is this no, where the study back. group is? No. No. What door number is this? No. Um, study group. Oh my god. Wait, this is not where the study group is. We got kids, man. Oh, you got kids. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought this was the study group. I actually thought. And this is the study group. 
good. I actually want to cry. I know, because it's like, no, well, he doesn't, uh, he's obviously not doing anything. No, he's not I'm sorry. Yes, he is doing harm. something. Yes, he is causing harm. And he doesn't have to go in and fucking. Physical harm. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I, that literally, when I saw the little kid in the. Oh, that just made me like really want to fucking cry. The mom was outside. This is your worst fear. This is your worst fear as a parent. Is someone coming into your home who again, obviously seems mentally unstable because who the fuck does that? Okay, you're coming in, you're waltzing in. So they feel safe. She's outside doing gardening. She glances over at him and she starts saying to, to the her husband, like, come to the front door because she knows he's with the fucking kids. And he's super nice because if it was my husband, he would fucking punch him in the face immediately. I was gonna say, and most people I think would take it a step further. That's the thing, when you first watch it, like before they leave, it very much plays out like this could be a scene in a movie when it's like about to show like some kind of murder unfold where it's like, you don't expect someone to do that. You can't have all doors locked at all times, but it's like literally she's in the front yard and it's just such a unassuming situation that it just shows how easy someone can do that. And it's like, no, he didn't end up doing anything, but he could have. Well, and he did, he fucked them up mentally. I feel like that would like, just ruin my entire perception of my safety, my stability, my trust. Like, and especially when you're encountering people on a daily basis. So when you have a home that you've had for a long period of time, you're encountering the mailman, you know your UPS guy, you know everybody and everybody kind of timidly approaches your house. Every once in a while you get the occasional like solicitor who comes in the front and tries to sell you something and that's annoying and that's about it. For this level of like invasiveness to occur in your safe space is criminal. And is this what he got arrested for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the and agreed because it, it's, something about like having just kind of understood social norms yeah. and like knowing what's expected of people and then to have someone come in and totally just flip that upside down and be like actually people are gonna do whatever they fucking want that it, you're right it is gonna scar you for life because you're gonna be like constantly on yeah. edge normally things that wouldn't have worried you you're gonna be super paranoid about i've never liked pranks at somebody else's expense when they're done in public number one i don't like the fact that they're filmed when they're not like consented to i don't like the fact that they're done at all this is i mean obviously criminal because he was arrested but i feel like when i saw that child and i just know the fear that they must have been experiencing i literally hope he never gets the fucking post online again i don't he looks super young how old is he i don't give a fuck how young he is he deserves to be in jail he can't be if he's 18 even right he looks really young but regardless what the fuck like this is really pissing me off i'm really upset well and i mean i think this one obviously is i'm i guess perspective and it depends on the person but similar to the dog one like that lady is probably going to be scarred for life that she's constantly anyone that's around her dog and like kind of moves in that direction she's gonna be <laughs> Like, are they going to take it? Yeah. It's like giving people PTSD because you think it's funny. And it's like, you don't even think it's funny. I don't think you just know it'll get views. Like it's, it's sick. How many people gassed him up to this point where his pranks got to this level of severity is what I'm wondering, because obviously it must have performed. He's 18. Oh, he's 18. Oh, good. Jail to you, my friend. This is honestly the unfortunate side of social media and clout and just like all of this attention that horrendous things get I have you. I have bad news. Oh, what's your bad news? Six hours ago, there's a Daily Mail update. It says TikTok troublemaker Mizzy says police will never get him after leaving court with a slapped wrist. Do you just want me to end it all today or was there, you know, maybe a side of this that was going to give you know. me some hope? Here's the thing. Did we think that him getting arrested was going to suddenly make him not a fucking horrible human being? No. No, that's not going to happen. Same with the teacher, I think. Yeah. Like, getting canceled isn't going to suddenly make him not an Literally. asshole. Literally. It's just going to make him a little more careful about his words. No, well, and this guy is not even going to give a shit about anything. Like, he's not even going to take the teacher route and apologize. He's using it as, like, ammo to then keep being a Well, you know what? Again, one day, you're going to fuck around and you're going to find out. You're going to fuck around with the wrong person and it's going to bite you in the ass. And honestly, I hope you live to learn from it. I also... I have a question. Yeah, he gets views, but like, I don't think he has a lot of fans. I mean, he does have some fans. Actually, let me show you really quick. Um, I have a clip of the stuff his fans do. Oh, fun. But fun fact really quick. I was watching um, Ready to Glare's video on this. So that's where I had heard whisperings of this. She said he was banned from both um, TikTok and YouTube, I believe. Well, and so he is now. I don't know when that happened, if it was from the walking into the person's house situation or if it was earlier. But regardless, my question was going to be, how does he make money? Like no one's giving him brand deals. Oh, definitely not. But also 
he didn't make no money off of this. I think it's like this depraved clout drug. Like he literally just loves the attention. I think that's what it is. But it seems like somehow like people like him do find ways to make money. And I'm always just kind of curious, like how is this at all sustainable? I do not think he makes a dollar off of this. Like I really, first of all, he had 200,000 followers on TikTok. That's virtually nothing these days. Oh, is that all he had? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he only had like 200,000 followers. He's willing to do all of this for just that? It's literally like anybody looking his way would be enough for him. Like their bar is so low. You know what I mean? They just want some sort of attention. Like he this. doesn't need any kind of return on <laughs> investment. <laughs> he literally just wants to do it and have a reason to do it, I feel. Well, and I, I haven't done a deep dive into his content. I don't plan to, but um, I feel like he definitely probably participated in like the throwing a gallon of milk in an aisle of the grocery store. Licking ice cream during COVID. That was going to be my next example. <laughs> yeah. And it's like ones that it's like, what? Who? Why? Like, you're literally just making someone's day more literally. Difficult. Like, yeah. stop. A uh, quick video of his fans. I think this was after a meet and greet. No! 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 It's giving Jake Paul in the mall when it was being looted vibes. Oh my God. Look oh my God. Oh my God. That doesn't even account for the stuff I'm sure they stole, but just like making a mess. I'm like, you fucking asshole. But like, do you there know it how is. much those people Isn't get paid? It? That's literally the seed that he sowed. That's literally it. Like he planted that seed. That's what he wants. That's what he wants to put out into this world. This useless. Just wreak havoc. He just wants to wreak havoc on the fucking human race. And honestly, I have to again just say like, it just has to be a different world he's living in than I am. That is, sometimes people are so fucked up and they just are so completely in a different reality that you're just like, yeah, we don't live in the same place. There's a world where there is someone that does this that like maybe if you talk to them, you would pick up pretty quickly that like they're a hurt, broken person that's like seeking validation in the wrong area. No, this feels like you would like sit down with him and you'd be like, oh my God, is he a sociopath? Well, yes. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Not to be uh, Shane Dawson doing a documentary on Jake Paul right now, but like, yes. <laughs> he stole an old lady's dog. The fact that that was the first video you showed me, like, hello, I just, this was, it got so there, much there worse. There wasn't really a way to build up to it. Here's the thing and that's how I know that we live in different realities because like how does he sleep like genuinely the way I wake up in night terrors about like something I said at a party five years ago like genuinely I do not understand it I'm thinking if I like knocked something over in public that I would be like dreaming about it for weeks yeah you mean like the time I was trying to get cups at the Dollar Tree and they shattered on the floor and I literally wanted to fucking disappear that's such a good representation of like our different levels of like we're on that level this is like, I literally tried to take the broom out of the manager's hand and he told me it was a liability if I cleaned up the glass on my own. And I was like, okay, well, sorry. Just the idea of like having to live with all of the things you did, he's a masochist. Also, I feel like the conundrum too with things like this, with the Mizzy situation specifically is like, he must love the coverage too. So like, fuck us. Like, why are we doing this? <laughs> oh, he, he does because look it. Damn um, it. I'm like, you are correct, girly. <laughs> because his friend fucking films him going into the jail no oh wait so first he puts out i think he says he apologized to the couple hey missy what are we doing man so we walking it we were just walking though so basically we went to go apologize to the people yeah i know you guys have seen the video in the world we didn't have to say what video. You might need to say what video for us everywhere in the world. What are they saying, Lily? What are they saying? I was like, let me translate for you. Hello? They just went and apologized or they're going to apologize to the couple. How about don't show up at their house again? How about that? That's what Angelica said. Angelica was like, leave them alone. They say that they're going to apologize or that they just did and then proceed to say what for, like why they're apologizing before stopping themselves and being like, well, we don't even have to tell you though because like this video is everywhere in the world right now and everyone's watching. Elon Musk reposted it. Elon Musk reposted it? What did he say? I don't know, let's look. Angelica though was like, um, Elon Musk is chronically online and posts everything. So not That's a huge true, actually. <laughs> Nothing's really coming up, if it did he? He might be lying. <laughs> Which wouldn't be surprising because in another video, he talks about how he's going on Pierce Morgan and I don't think that oh happened. Oh my God, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Can't even get on Pierce Morgan? Pretty bad. Nope, I don't think he did. Weird. Interesting, okay. Well, um, Mizzy being a liar. <gasps> that's crazy. So basically now, today we've just come from apologizing to the woman and that. You're gonna see the video probably. She's gonna post it somewhere, obviously. Yeah, but she was recording the video. The video got stupidly viral. 
We literally bopped into the yard. I don't really walk into random houses. You remember from last year, I used to do that a lot. Yeah. Don't do that anymore. So his guy was just like, yeah, come, let's bop into the yard. I'm just like, fuck it. Say so, nothing. You only live. Up. Come, we're outside. Bro. We're outside, bro. So we what? don't know. They just their whole their like little catchphrase is, uh, "We outside." Uh, yeah. Bad baby already made that a thing. So don't even try it, honey. <laughs> They're already outside. Well, literally, it's so embarrassing. The way my brain crams trying to understand this specific accent. I feel like it's, is it a northern UK? I, I don't fucking know, but I cannot, cannot understand it. I don't know. So he goes and turns himself in. Make sure to share this everywhere. Make sure to share this everywhere. Free to go. Free to go. Everywhere. Everywhere, man. When I see you again. Oh. Oh. I'm there, like I'm so secondhand embarrassed. If any woman or man ever fucks these people, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I mean that with my entire soul, I swear. That is such a fucking L, like big fat fucking L. Oh my God, I can't. They are so, all of them, the worst. The worst, all of them. Last one. What up, grand people? It's your boy, Mizzy. You already know we got the little, yeah? What's that say? Free man up. Mm. You already know the situation. You already know what's going down. Mm. What I'm saying is keep the movement going. What's that say? I don't even know what he said. But, um... <laughs> you and me both, sister. <laughs> oh, my God, Lily. I hate you for this. You know what? Was this payback for Island Boys? Just say it right now. Maybe, like, partial payback, but I had to... I, w I didn't have to, but I went to the fucking Twitter, and you would have been able to warn me if you had known, but you are a little bitch, and you just accepted the text. I photoshopped <laughs> their weenies for you. I thought that was enough. I didn't know you were gonna deep dive into them. They're fucking OnlyFans. I have to say, as infuriating as this episode was, I was very entertained. Like, I felt like I was just like gasping throughout the whole thing. This was a lot. I was excited to see your reactions because I know I had very visceral reactions to the videos. Yeah, so. yeah that was that was a lot. Um, fun. <laughs> You're welcome, girlies. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for 50, girlies. No, um, I really, I think it's amazing that we made it to 50. And I, I mean, it's only up from here. When are we going to quit? When we're like 80? I don't know. Will we ever quit? Will we just die? I don't know. I was going to say, we, should, we we better not be quitting at 80. That won't be too no, long. No, I meant like 80 years old. Oh, I thought you meant episode 80. It was like, no, no, no we're going past that. <laughs> no, no, that's like three months. Anyway, um, I really hope you guys like this episode. I surely did question mark or didn't. I'm not sure. <sighs> yeah. And I would end this on a, another cheers, but I can't because it's, it's bad empty. luck to cheers with an empty cup. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the end of this one, I mean, you severely need like a medal or something for real, for real this time. I mean it. And I want to just also put out another warning. Do not go to the Island Boy Twitter. You know that's just do gonna make them wanna it. go more. Don't do it. Trigger warning, little pencil weenies unclothed completely. That's exactly, literally, I, I don't even wanna explain. Why are they so what, long? Uh, no, okay, I don't, I, <laughs> I was gonna say, I didn't even wanna describe what it looks like in the video because there's some there's a comparison that my mind immediately goes to. You know those, uh, those like action figures that are stretchy? <laughs> Stop, my son has one. Stop. I'm done. I need to go. I need to go. I can't do this. That's what it looks like because they're so long. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I'm crying. Oh my God. <laughs> Girlies. Bye, that's it. We need to call it. Bye, girly. Um. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We can't even do an outro because this is too unhinged. I love you and we will see you on Monday. Bye. <laughs>